Hi, I'm Verna Jo with Spanish Fork Senior Citizen Center. We put together this little program to keep you connected to the Senior Center. We want you to know what's going on at the Senior Center with a lot of information about different crafts, uh, ideas of things that you could do at home to keep yourself motivated and busy. We want you to come back so we can always surround you with people who care. Change, hut. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Present arms. I, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisibly, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, Spanish Fork. It's Heather Lyman, nurse with Maple Creek Home Health and Hospice. And I just hope everybody had a really Merry Christmas. Um, I don't know that we had peace on earth this year, but we, I do feel like there's been kind of a shift. I have noticed that lots of people are out there trying to do just simple acts of kindness for others. It's almost like there's an underground movement of, of people that are trying to change things just one kind act at a time. So in that spirit, if you want to keep that Christmassy feel longer than December 31st, I have some ideas. And I'm speaking to the seniors, but I'm extending it to anyone listening. We have some really wonderful volunteer opportunities in our community. And seniors, I feel like this is your time to shine. The world needs your experience, your courtesy, and your work ethic out there. You've all heard how hard it is to find employees right now. Well, it's 10 times harder to find volunteers. So let me tell you about some opportunities. Number one, join RSVP. RSVP is the biggest network of senior volunteers over 55, adults over 55. Did you know that you can volunteer for one day? You don't have to be locked in. You don't have to be committed to once a week or once a month. You can volunteer for one day, and they have lots of ideas. So check out rsvp.com or Senior Corps, and that's Core C-O-R-P-S. And if you're not comfortable getting on the computer to look at those websites, get one of those grandkids to help you with it, or any member of the Senior Center can help you. Number two, spend some time with kids. You can join up with the Foster Grandparent Program or Big Brother, Big Sister. You're already being a grandparent. You already know how to do this. And most of you will say that this is the best part of your life right now is being a grandparent. So do something you're already doing. And what if you could be the turning point for another child who, who just needs to know that somebody cares? What, what a heartwarming thing to think that you could actually make a difference in, in a child's life that maybe otherwise wouldn't have, have much of a shot. Number three, kids not your thing. Then if they're too loud or rambunctious for you, volunteer to help another senior. Be a senior companion. The senior companions, they do things like visit shut-ins. They can help write up grocery lists and shopping lists. They can actually deliver groceries. They can um, transport other seniors to and from medical appointments or, or just visit just to pass the time of day, just to help those hours go by faster. And who couldn't use another friend? Number four, have you ever heard of micro-volunteering? I hadn't, but there are actual pages of volunteer opportunities that are small do-it-yourself projects that you can do from home. So there are things like um, knitting caps for the babies at the hospital or lap blankets for the, the residents at a care center. You can put together bags for the emergency bags for the Red Cross or for homeless shelters or women's shelters. They come with 
pre-made lists of all the things that you need. It could not be easier. And you can do it right there on your couch. You can put together homemade thank you cards for the healthcare workers, for the firefighters, for the police officers, for the Red Cross workers. There, there are just numerous things that you can do. They talked about on their site, um, they talked about making doggy bags for shelter animals and they even had a recipe to make homemade doggy treats for the shelter animals. There's so many needed things and there were literally thousands of do-it-yourself ideas that, that you can do just, just sitting at home. Um, you could read a book to school children via Zoom. We've all learned how to do Zoom over the last two years. You could put together back to school backpacks for kids who maybe otherwise wouldn't have the supplies that they need. And I have some teachers in my family and they are always desperate for supplies. Those teachers put so much together out of their own pockets. So those are just a few of the opportunities that are out there for volunteers. So you can check out pointsoflight.org for those ideas. And let's just make our little corner of Spanish Fork shine this year. We love you, stay safe. Here's what's cooking in January for the Senior Center of Spanish Fork. On Friday the 7th, we're having pork chops, that's our member meal, baked potatoes, green beans, salad, dinner roll, and strawberry shortcake. Monday the 10th is sweet and sour chicken. Thursday the 13th, beef and cheese burritos. Because it's Martin Luther King Day on the 17th, we will be closed and there will be no meals. Thursday the 20th, pulled pork sandwiches. Monday the 24th, spaghetti. Thursday the 27th, scrambled eggs. Monday the 30th, chicken salad sandwiches. Come and enjoy our meals. Happy New Year. Hi, I'm Shelley from Spring Gardens in Mapleton, and I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. This January, Spring Gardens of Mapleton is offering a special gift. If you come in and take a tour of our community, you will be entered into a drawing for prizes from the local community, from Spanish Fork, Springville, and Mapleton. So go ahead, come in, see us, schedule a tour. We look forward to seeing you. I also wanted to announce that on January 20th, here at Spanish Fork Senior Citizen Center, you can come in and see me. I'll also be bringing our licensed massage therapist with me, and we'll be providing free hand massages. That will be at 10.30 on the 20th. So come and see us. Thanks, bye. It's time for jokes, 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 jokes with Beverly. Oh, good. <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I asked my 91-year-old father, Dad, what were your good old days? He thoughtfully replied, when I wasn't good and I wasn't old. <laughs> okay. Mm. One of the shortest wills ever written. Being of sound mind, I spent all the money. <laughs> okay. Of course, so. that's appropriate. <laughs> My husband can't activate our Amazon Echo because he keeps forgetting its name, Alexa. I said, just think of the car Lexus and add an A at either end. The next time he wanted to use our new toy, he looked a bit puzzled. Then he remembered what I'd said and confidently called out, Acura. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. It's he, close. Well, he couldn't even remember the name of the car. Yeah, well, Acura is a car. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. On the phone with my 93-year-old brother in Wisconsin, um, I told, and I told him I thought it was time he paid someone to shovel his snow. He suddenly grew indignant. Why should I pay someone to shovel, he demanded. I can get my son to do it. He's only 70. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. As the hostess at the casino buffet showed me to my table, I asked her to keep an eye out for my husband, who would be joining me momentarily. I started to describe him. He has gray hair, wears glasses, has a pot belly. She stopped me there. Honey, she said, today is senior day. They all look like that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and don't we know it. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Okay. Happy New Year, and uh, we're super happy to be with you guys again uh, from the Wellness Bridge Group. Um, it's, a, it's an exciting time to uh, start out the new year, 2022, with uh, some goals and resolutions. So uh, we're here to, uh, to help you uh, meet those goals, and uh, we want to provide an opportunity to, um, to be able to uh, improve your health and uh, improve your well-being. Um, one of the great things we're doing this month for, of January is a two for one special. So ba basically 50% off. Um, if you bring a friend uh, down to Wellness Bridge Group, then uh, we'll, we'll give you that two for one deal um, and, uh, and help get, uh, get everybody involved. Um, I'm here with Carla. She's gonna show us Hi. some uh, some exercises that you can start the year out with and uh, I'll turn it over to her. Okay. So what you're gonna need for these exercises is you're gonna need something long and like a stick or as you can see, we have PVC pipes. You can use a broom, you can use a mop. If you don't have anything long like that, grab some weights. It's just something for you to hold on to. So what we're gonna do first is you're gonna hold the, your arms out like this as far as you can on your pole and then you're gonna just bring your arms down and then bring them up and then bring it back behind your shoulders and then back up and back down to and then bring your arms back up and down do this 10 to 12 times take a break and then do another 10 to 12 times two or three times Another great move that you can do with the pole is you can bring it behind you with your palms up and this is going to work your triceps and you're just going to lift like again 10 to 12 times lifting one, two, three and if you really are adventurous hold it for 10 seconds at the end of each set. Okay, and then to stretch yourself, this is a good one, put your pole in front of you, walk your hands down until you are bent over and hold for 30 seconds. That's a long time, but you'll feel better after. And then walk your hands back up the pole and do it again, but with the opposite hand leading if you can remember, I never remember. And hold it again, and then bring your hands back up. Another thing you can do is you can hold it out like this and twist your arms like you're driving a car. So even if you have a weight, you can hold the weight in two hands and just twist and twist and twist. This will get your heart rate up doing that. So those are just a few things that you can do to uh, start out the new year with new health, with your health goals. And we hope to see you at the Wellness Bridge. We're located, uh, our classes are at 1015 and we are at the Sports Performance Academy.
Beverly. You got more jokes? Yes. Yeah. While he was visiting my while he was visiting, my father asked for the password to our Wi-Fi. It's taped under the modem, I told him. After three failed attempts to log on, he asked, Am I spelling this right? T A P E D U N D E R T H E M O D E M. It's gonna take some figuring out, but I got you, it. You got it. What's okay. that spell? Under the modem. Oh, it's under the modem. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Sometimes you have to spell it out yeah. for them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This, this farmer's wife prayed to the Lord and asked him, how old will I be when I die? His reply was, 96 years old. Wow, she said, hot diggity dog. I will have myself all fixed up. She had everything lifted and tucked it and was in the doctor's office making the last payment on the reconstruction. She walked out of the doctor's office, started across the street and was hit and killed. She gets to heaven and asks the Lord, what happened? You told me I would live to be 96. His reply, well, I just didn't recognize you. <laughs> Wait. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you didn't get it. Not yet. I'm working on it. Okay, work on it. Ah, so if I start laughing sometime, you'll know I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like at the senior center. <laughs> I know. I'm probably proud of it. <laughs> okay. Two old guys, Fred and Sam, went to the movies. A few minutes after it started, Fred heard Sam rustling around and he seemed to be searching on the floor under his seat. What are you doing? asked Fred. Sam, a little grumpy by this time, replied, I had a caramel on my mouth and, I, and it dropped out. I can't find it. Fred told him to forget it because it would be too dirty by now. But I've got to, said Sam. My teeth are in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got that one. I got that one. Oh, that, good. That was an easier one, yeah. yeah. Still working on the other one. I'll get it figured out. Thank you. Oh. Over the years, I've become friends with Christmas Lutu, which is with Seville, uh, a facility in Orem uh, for the elderly. and. Uh, he has such a good heart, such a loving, kind man. Recently, I contacted him and asked him what his goal was for this year. And his goal was to collect 5,000 field Christmas stockings for local senior citizens here in Utah County, which is a huge, huge uh, act of kindness and love. I get really emotional when I talk about this because the volunteers came out of the woodwork. Uh, within, honestly, within a couple of hours, I had 300 Christmas stockings all ready to go. And then as time went on in the last couple of weeks, our, our seniors in local community, uh, the Emily uh, Dunning from uh, Carl G. Mazur Preparatory Academy in Linden, they donated, their children decorated uh, letters to Santa. They thought that the seniors would really enjoy that. ALA uh, school here locally, Mrs. Warren's class, second grade class, my grandson's in, and they wrote and, and decorated beautiful and adorable Christmas cards for each of the seniors, which is, was huge. That enriched all of the volunteers' lives, as well as our seniors are gonna get a kick out of that. The first time we did stockings, the Canyon Ridge young women came and helped uh, last week Phil almost 200 Christmas stockings and they had that completely done within about 45 minutes to an hour which was like whoa how wonderful then the 24th ward here in Spanish Fork they crocheted uh, scarves and uh, hats and they collected little blankets and all kinds of uh, toiletries the primary as well as the young women of the 24th ward here in Spanish Fork and uh, I know that so many of our seniors struggle. The federal government deems that 50% of all senior citizens in any given city are living at or below poverty level. And with that said, a lot of the seniors will go with, without whatever they have or need, as such as medications or food, just to pay their utility bills. And it's very rewarding when we can just share and help each other out. 
I would also like to thank our advisory board here at the Senior Citizen Center. A lot of those members came out late at night to help put those stockings together and made contributions of their own. One of our seniors, her son is a dentist and he donated 50 toothbrushes, which was incredible. Thank you so much to the Spanish Fork Advisory Board. I love you and appreciate you greatly. I just want to thank all of the volunteers that have helped actually put these together, all of the contributions uh, locally, Humana, Weston Wynn with Humana uh, brought 200 Bath and Body hand soap dispensers, which how nice is that to put in our stockings. Again, I want to say thank you and may God bless you and Merry Christmas. Hello to all of you. We miss you. Um, I'm here today to read a story, and these stories come from a book that my husband wrote called Reflections of a Farm Boy. And they're stories about growing up on a farm where they farmed with horses. Now, this one's called Cartoons on the Wall. The old roundhouse-style barn was a place where many hours were spent milking cows, feeding cows, calves, pigs, rabbits, and horses. It was a place of refuge sometimes when things got, didn't go just right, a place of solitude when I wanted to be alone and think. The remembrance of the old barn has served me faithfully this many years, for still in my mind's eyes, it is, it is used as an escape from a troubled modern world. Today, as one walks along the wall, there is yet to be found drawings of Popeye, Mickey Mouse, and Little Abner. There's a broken arrow that says crack where it was broken. Can't remember why, but it's a there. Also, World War II airplanes here and there were bombs and little dots representing bullets. More exciting than cartoons on the wall are those things seen that are not on the wall. A mother sow with a, with a row of little piglets all squealing and trying to get the best faucets. Baby calves could reach out for a pet or a suck on your thumb. Cats following you around, wanting to drink a bowl of milk or a squirt from the cow. We made them catch their own meal. The cows with their bug-eyed, bug-out eyes jesting for a handout of grain. The horses with flowing mane and tails, their hair shining from a recent brush down. They so loved the curry comb as the teeth felt like a good scratch all over. Rabbits were in one pen that we left open for them. They loved the alfalfa, hay and grain. And of course, the dog that followed everywhere. Can you remember that? That sounds like a fun thing. Here's another one. Horses versus, tra versus tractors. In 1950 was a big year. Something got into my bullheaded grandfather, conservative grandfather, that surprised me. He went to town and bought three tractors with, equip with equipment to match. Purchase included a combine baler, a swather, two elevators, and a four-row potato planter and digger. I didn't know why he did this, as we were doing just fine with our large draft pulling horses and horse-drawn equipment. Our hotshot neighbor <laughs> across the way went broke with his power equipment while we made money with our horses. The old Hoover wagon and manure spreader, tongues were cut off and adapted to the trailer hitch. A tractor was now the dairy horse, pulling horse, and pickup truck. All of the horses except my pony and a team of draft horses were sold. The horses were used to pull the tractors out of the mud remove tree stumps and get in places the tractors couldn't reach. The first year of tractor culture was very difficult, as one had to learn the mechanics of it all. One also had to learn a new language, as the tractors would not respond to a cuss, to cuss words. Two tractors had rubber wheels, but one had spiked wheels made out of steel. The tractors had a tendency to pack the soft, mellow soil of our farm, so the steel wheel Farm All M was used whenever possible. In Idaho, the wind blows and the soil churned up by the spike wheels went mostly in our eyes. A whole, the whole new switch of farming methods was quite an experience in transition. 
One would think the horses were dangerous, but the power equipment was more so. Tractors didn't run away. In fact, sometimes they didn't run at all. Breakdowns were a dilemma, as you may or may not find replacement parts and had to wait several days for an order to arrive. Meanwhile, the field work waited to, to the detriment of growing or harvesting a good crop. Horse equipment was simple and could be held together often with wire until the job was done. Another thing, the blacksmith shop was in transition also, and you had to wait for welding to be done, as welders and machinists had twice as much to do. Sometimes the welded part did not fit the complex equipment anymore. I was happy not to harness the horses every morning or put them away for lunch or at the end of the day. It did not have to rub the tractors down or be teased by them. And teased by them meant when you got between two horses, they always put together like this and squeezed you in between them. Tractors used 10 to 20 gallons of gas a day, and that was real costly at 14 to 19 cents a gallon. <laughs> oh, I'd love that today. I remember our farm gas had purple dye in it during the war years to distinguish it from automobile gas. Anyway, Grandpa would tell others that there wasn't much difference except for cost. It used to take a, day, take a half day to repair equipment and three days to do the work. Now it takes three days to repair the equipment and half day to do the work. The statement was far-fetched, but not by much. You have a good day, everybody. <laughs>